Hi everyone. Today we're going to do question number 20, valid parentheses. It's a Monday, so I thought I would do a little bit easier question. We're going to first go over uh, and read the question, and then I'll show you the process of how I would solve this problem. All right, let's read the question. Given a string containing just characters of these funky brackets, determine if the input string is valid. Simple question, right? So let's see what is actually valid. Um, an input string is valid if one bracket must be closed by the same type of brackets. An open bracket must be closed in the correct order. Note that empty string is also considered valid. Okay, so when you look at this question, um, these are like three key components you need to make sure you jot down or write it down somewhere in your whiteboard or, or anything. You know that, um, so these are like the edge cases that you have to consider The empty string is still considered valid. All right, cool. So how do we solve this problem? And what is a valid parenthesis? Well, valid parentheses or, uh, so if you look at the example here, um, something that opens with the open bracket must be closed with close bracket. Simple enough, right? And on the bottom here, same case, this open bracket must be closed with the close bracket. This open square bracket must be closed by the square bracket and so on and so forth, right? The only condition that this would fail is if you open the bracket and you close it with something else. Or if you open the bracket, say this is the open, uh, open bracket and then open square bracket, but then you close, um, your close bracket doesn't connect with the square bracket, then this is a failed condition, right? Um, same thing goes in here. This is a true condition, which is you have this curly bracket uh, with the square bracket and you close it with another square bracket and a curly, right? So this is a relative, uh, if you think about this, this is almost some sort of like a mapping problem, right? So what is available? First of all, if you were to solve this problem, you have to ask yourself, what is available for me? Right? All we have as input is the string that we have to basically do things to, right? Um, so how can we actually know the correlation of whether or not a particular string has um, the right bracket? Well, you have to dig through their minds, like what kind of data structure would I need to use, right? So a very common data structure to use for referencing things, at least in O and 1 uh, lookup time, would be a simple map or an object, right? Um, so let's do that. Let's create that object, uh, a reference object. I'm gonna call it oh, uh, brackets, right? Will equal to an object, which I'm gonna use the key, which is gonna be, so every close bracket, I'm gonna make sure I associate with that. Every square bracket, I make sure that it has a square bracket. And every, funky bracket, I'm going to make sure it associates with a funky bracket, right? So once you have this object, you pretty much have an object to reference um, your string, right? So all you need to do right now is ensure that you iterate through the string and based on whether or not um, what you see at first, you can create some sort of, uh, some sort of storage device to stack or, or at least um, anticipate when you do incur a close bracket to see if it meets the condition, right? So if you start thinking deeply, what kind of things would you wanna create, right? What kind of storage mechanism would you wanna create? Well, one of the things you could think about is almost like a deck of cards, right? If you go and approach, for example, uh, a square bracket or a curly bracket, I'm sorry, in this well, rounded bracket, right what do you expect the first or what does have to what does it have to be the first um close bracket well what, what does it have to be right it has to be at least the opposite which is a close uh, bracket right so what does this mean it means that if my condition if i start off with the open bracket um and it meets this condition my next close bracket must at least i know uh, must be the last one that i open right so what i mean by that is that you will probably need to create some sort of heap structure right it's like the last one in is always going to be the first one you compare to close back out right so let me give you a quick example so what i mean by this is like say you have uh for example in this case i have something like boom boom 
boom boom and boom and something like this right so what would you expect so when i iterate through the first item i want to make sure that okay if i approach my next bracket it should be that and the next case here will be if i were to open this it should be that right so what happens is like you go in here you check that it's an open bracket um you check for its opposite end which is the close bracket and you input it in here right and then once you you go to the next thing over here and if this does not con is not contained in this bracket as a key then you know it is some sort of closing mechanism right so since it's a closing mechanism you want to check if that closing mechanism is within your stack here right so what this is in here so great and then you just pop it off and pretty much you got yourself a solution right so let's continue to code it so you create the reference um, object here and then we're going to also create a, um, a heap i would call it and we make it as a simple array all right now all we're left to do is to uh, iterate through it every for every character of s this is the ES6 way of doing it. It's very fun. If my bracket at the character, right? So what I'm doing is that if my bracket and the, one of these is is one of these keys true, if it's one if it's true, then what do I do? Well, if it's true, then I make sure <clears throat> then I make sure I uh, go heap dot push the uh, bracket at the character so make sure that I push this element into the uh, heap or you could call this an array right otherwise what I'm gonna do I'm gonna check if the heap dot pop so heap dot pop returns the last item of this particular heap if that heap does not equal to the character that I'm interested in right then that's an automatically matic fail return false right that's an automatic fail now all we're left to do right now is make sure that we deal with the edge case which is uh, in case that does exist uh, heap dot length right i'm just going to return the heap dot length um, of this particular because if it's an empty thing um this won't meet but it'll still be uh of something valid so okay cool and this perhaps would solve the problem. Let's check it out. Great. Ooh, the time is horrible here. Now to show you how uh, lead code is really not always the accurate on these numbers, I can submit again. It'll com give me a completely different number. Yep, well, there's a solution. This is a very relatively simple one to warm up for Monday. I'll probably release a little couple more videos later this week, but I thought it would be good to just do a quick warm up uh, because this talks about, you know, uh, a very warm up heap and, uh, you know, using hash maps and stuff like that. All right, well, thank you. Bye.